So, all right, so in here we've got our, here, here's the, there's two windows in Ableton Live. There's the session view and there is the arrangement view. The arrangement view is where you uh, actually arrange your track and you lay it out and you make it into a song. So you have to go into the arrangement view eventually, but a lot of people actually start off working in the session view here. Um, so Kyle says FL Studio versus Ableton. I don't know, I've never used FL Studio. I know a lot of people use it, so whatever. I mean, my opinion is if you're making good music, you're making good music, and it doesn't really matter what you use, it's whatever you're most comfortable with. Uh, I've been using Ableton Live for 20 years, so this is what I know. Uh, but also I use Pro Tools, I use that for a long time as well, and Logic as well. I've just never used FL because it only came to the Mac recently. So, all right. So in here we have our arrangement view and we have our, our, arranged, our arrangement view and our session view here. And in each one of these, just like with any DAW, you have your tracks, you have a transport area, you have like a mixer area. And over here, we've got in the same, in this other view, the arrangement view, it's all the same stuff. It's just over here on the right hand side. So think of this, I kind of think of this as the edit window in Pro Tools. And this one's kind of like the mix window in Pro Tools, but it, it's a little bit different and you're going to see what I mean by that because when I first started using Ableton Live all those years ago, I'd already been using Pro Tools for a long time and I was kind of like trying to see, um, I was like trying to compare the two together. And so when I first started using it, I first started using it, I, I, I started thinking like, oh, this is where you put your plugins, but that is not the case. The plugins actually go down here on the bottom part down here in the bottom of the window. And both of these windows here, if I switch between my, my, arrange, uh, my arrangement view or my session view, then they're both down here on the bottom. You've got your, down here is where you put your instruments and your effects and stuff like that. But it's also where you can see inside of your clips, okay? So let's just take a tour around the screen real quick. And what I'm doing here is on the notes over here in the live introduction, it's all here. And, and these here. So that's basically what we're going to be doing uh, in the video form here. So first of all, you use the tab key to flip flop between these two views. And up here in the top or left hand corner right here, we got our link button. Don't worry about the link button for now. That's uh, for you to link up the uh, two different DAWs or two different versions of Ableton Live or something like that together so they can work in, um, they can work uh, like in sync together. Uh, Pro Tools just added link uh, capabilities into its into the latest version, so now you can actually use Pro Tools and, and Ableton Live in sync using Link and not have to use uh, Rewire. So anyway, you've got uh, you got your link button here. You got your tap tempo in. Here's your tempo. You can click and drag that up and down. If you just click and drag straight up and down, it'll change that. You can also click, double click it or click on it and hit a tempo and hit Enter, and it will let you type that in. So that's pretty cool there. Over here you've got nudge buttons, ignore these. You've got your uh, your time signature here. You can change this to like three, four time or six, eight. Oops. But I'm just gonna leave it in four, four. Here's my metronome. If I turn it on, if I turn it off. <clears throat> and here you've got different things to do with your metronome. So you've got your count in, if you wanna have a count in. You've got your uh, classic, you got your click, wood, uh, rhythm, all that stuff there. <sighs> Something is going on with my, I'm gonna have to like wipe my hard drive here one day and like start fresh with this thing because <clears throat> it is, keeps hanging on me when I'm using uh, OBS now. It only does it when I'm using OBS and broadcasting. But it's, uh, sorry, I'm gonna grab a cable here and see if that solves my issue, but I don't think it will. Do I even have the right cable in here? And by the kind of time I get done, it will have like fixed itself. I don't think I have the right cable in this box. Super, super annoying. Sorry, y'all, for the pause here. It's, uh, this is like a new, a new problem that's been happening. All right, well, it fixed itself. Okay, so <clears throat> don't know where that problem came from, but it started doing that like a few weeks ago. 
I'm not even sure why. <clears throat> doesn't seem to be connected to really anything, but I feel like if I have everything connected up USB, it should be fine. But So we'll try that uh, tomorrow. Anyway, so here's my metronome, and in here we can change the sound of the metronome. You can change the rhythm, but I don't really recommend doing much of anything here. The four boxes on the screen, can they go to the left? Four boxes. Which, which four boxes, Staffo? Sorry, I missed your question. Um, all right. While you're while you're responding to that question, <clears throat> uh, over here one bar <clears throat> is our. This is our global quantize here. It's our global quantize right here, and it's um, you got one bar, half bars, uh, all that stuff there on the other screen. You mean this stuff here? This cannot go to the left. No, it's it's on the right, and that's it. That's just how it is. You just have to get used to that. I know it's a little bit weird compared to Pro Tools or Logic, any other DAW, but that's how they set it up. Okay, so here's our global quantize here, <clears throat> and can, we can have the global quantize set up for one bar, half notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, stuff like that, or you have two bars. But re really, the default is one bar, and I just highly recommend keeping it at one bar. Okay, um, then we've got here, over here is our, where your clock is, if I hit go, it's gonna just show you where it is. Now this view, this, this little readout here, really only has to do with this view over here. <clears throat> so it's showing you where your playhead is in your arrange view. <clears throat> Um, then you've got your play, stop, and record, which are your transport. Then you've got here the uh, your session. This is, well, what is this? This is your uh, MIDI arrangement overdub, so it's in the arrangement view over here. Then you've got your automation arm. <clears throat> you've got your re-enable automation arm. You've got your capture MIDI, and you've got your session record overdub. Now, what these buttons here do, this one here allows you to set up a loop in Ableton Live. Turn that loop on. And I could now record over this if I had something I wanted to record with, with this button right here. It allows me to punch in over the top of stuff in here, so it's not gonna go. But <clears throat> so there you go, <clears throat> there. Uh, and we'll come back and we'll talk about these buttons because they kind of come into play a little bit more later on. Over here is my see where my loop is what are you doing dog stop walking around i feel like you're gonna go pee somewhere in a corner all right so <clears throat> here you go lie down lie down good girl good girl lie down yes there you go okay so um Where was I? Oh, so these numbers here have to do with this bar right here. And I can move this around, and this is just where my locators are. And then this turns my loop on and off, so it'll loop that section of the song. If I don't have anything set up, see how that works there? It's, it doesn't show you any lines down the side, and if I click this on, now there's lines down the side. And I can grab these in the beginning here, move that around. And what you'll notice is that when I do that, I can move this number right here. It shows me where it starts, and this shows me how many bars it is. <clears throat> so that's how you set up your loop in Ableton Live. Across the top over here, we've got our draw mode on, so you can draw in notes and stuff like that. You can also just double click to put notes in. This is your computer keyboard mode. It's like your keyboard MIDI mode. It turns your computer keyboard into MIDI. Here is your key command setup. So if I click on that, everything turns orange. I use this to set up uh, to set up um, keyboard shortcuts and stuff like that, which is what you can do with this. It's a really nice way to use it. So I can turn things on and on, off using keyboard shortcuts. Uh, and I've seen a lot of people use it like that because nowadays the original meaning for it, I think was slightly different, but now it's there's a lot of uh, controllers and stuff that kind of take the place of what we used to have to do back in the early 2000s. Over here, you've got MIDI mode turned on. The MIDI mode here allows me to control things with a controller if I don't have it set up to automatically control stuff. Most of the time, my controllers these days 
just work with Ableton Live automatically. So all I have to do is click on a track and it will work. But uh, if you don't have it set up like that, you can override things as well with that. So that's this button here, it turns things blue. And again, we'll talk about that more later. This here is your computer, your CPU usage, how much computer processor you're using. This here is your disk overload. So if you are using your hard drive, like you have too many like files all over the place, that'll start to flash there. It's not horrible if it flashes, but it's also not great if it starts flashing. Uh, what's up, Swift? How you doing, man? <clears throat> uh, over here, you can see if I hit keys on my keyboard, or on my, my push keyboard, it flashes these notes, and that's your MIDI in and out. The MIDI in and out, uh, just for that's just basically for just uh, making sure that you're getting MIDI in and out uh, stuff. Um, so that uh, for troubleshooting, that's really all that's for. Over here, <clears throat> excuse me. Over here, we can change our views. We can click on these buttons to change our views. What we're looking at here, and then down here. This is your show hide view. If I want to show and hide stuff over here, I can. Sorry, I'm in a different room, so the dog is has a different space to hang out, which is I'm afraid she's gonna go and like go into a corner and, like pee or poop or something. <clears throat> Although she's she has used the bathroom this morning, but all right. Anyway, so down here across the bottom are some different show or hide things. So if I click on these, and this is the same for each view, I can show or hide different things on my screen. <clears throat> same thing with this view here. I can show my I/O settings, my sends returns, my mixer views, this kind of stuff here. The D stands for track delay, and the X stands for crossfade for DJ stuff. If you are using Ableton Live as a DJ setup. So that's what's going on right here. And you can just click those. Now the other cool thing about this is if you, if you hold down Command Option and you hit the I key or the Send and Return key or stuff like that, the Mix the M key, this here will uh, let you turn those on and off as well just using shortcuts. That's Command Option and whatever letter you see right here. It's, it just turns those on and off uh, like that. <coughs> Down here across the bottom, we have our track, uh, our like kind of where you can see your 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 plugins. Or if I switch, I can see what's inside of my clip. So if I look at a MIDI clip here, I just load up a MIDI clip by double clicking, and I can see inside my MIDI clip, and I could double click in here and just put things in here. It's a really fast way to work. I could also use my pencil tool to just click once and I can move things around in here like this. So it's another, it's a pretty fast way to work and we'll kind of be talking about both of these ways to work in Ableton Live. But <clears throat> that's what's down here. This is your kind of your, uh, what you're actually like looking at in here. We can see down here, it shows us all this stuff here. Track a device selector. And here's our show or hide our detail view thing down here. And that's also, um, Shift Command L is that shortcut for that down there. All right, across the bottom is your info view down here. And then right here is our other info view. So this right here is our, what well, they call the status bar. I call it the, the info bar, the status bar, whatever. But basically it helps you, it shows you what's going on within the program. So for example, if I mouse over something, it shows me what I've just moused over uh, here, let's see here. There we go. Latency. It shows me what my latency is for this plugin right here. And it shows me like what, and what I'm looking at is this one down here across the bottom. It shows me like what send it is because it just has uh, letters for your sends. So with just the letters for the sends, it's a little bit annoying to look at. So this actually shows you the name of stuff. And that's, I'm looking at this part down here. Now, this is our info view. I recommend keeping this on for people who are new to Ableton Live. It's basically a built-in manual. If you're, if you're familiar with Logic, Logic has the same thing, which they added in 
after they realized how useful it was in Ableton Live. Ableton Live has had this since the very beginning. So ever since the beginning, you can definitely read the manual. You should read the manual, but uh, you can also just mouse over the info view and, and check things out over here. I'm gonna close that down for right now though and keep going up here. Let's go up to the top up here in the upper left-hand corner. And this is our browser window. And this basically allows us to bring in our plugins and stuff like that in Ableton Live. So Uh, and in the, inside the browser window, I just want to point out a couple things real quick. So up here, we have collections of stuff. These are things that you set up, shortcuts to like get you to in, uh, plugins and stuff like a little bit quicker. So you can go in here and say like these are your basically your favorites section. And I named mine like this. They're not normally named like this, but if you want to rename it, just hit Command R. Give it a name like that. Okay, and I abbreviate everything. I, I put the numbers in there as well. And the reason why I put the numbers in there is because uh, you can click on something and give it a number and it will turn it on and off and take it to this view here. Or you can um, just take it and drag it into that view there to get it in there as well. Down here on the side, we got the categories, sounds, drums, instruments, sound, audio effects, MIDI effects, Max for Live, plugins, clips, and samples. These are all pretty self-explanatory and I recommend that you go ahead and explore these because once you've looked at them, you'll be like, oh, that's what that's for. But basically this is for pulling up instruments by their sound category. This is for pulling up your drums and drum kits. This is for pulling up instruments like instrument plugins themselves that come with Ableton Live. Then we've got audio effects, which is all your effects. Then we've got MIDI effects, which are uh, for doing MIDI stuff in Ableton Live. Um, then you got Max for Live, which is something that you only have if you have Suite. If you downloaded the demo, then you have Max for Live for, what is it, 30 days? No, it's, uh, it's 90 days actually, three months, or at least it used to be. Uh, then here's our plugins. This is where all the third-party plugins go. So all the plugins that do not come with Ableton Live, they all go in here. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of plugins that I can mess around with. And then in here, you've got clips and samples, that kind of stuff there. Down here, we've got places. Uh, places are various uh, folders on your computer that you've linked to that you can put in there. And uh, you just add folder and add a place in. And I've got a <clears throat> one of your uh, assignments for during the, the break is, is about doing that kind of stuff and messing around with this area over here. So that's what's going on with this view here. It's a basic an overview of everything in here. Now, Let's go ahead and talk about clips in here now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in here, I'm going to grab some samples. And I've got in here, in your, um, here, let's go and look in Canvas. In Canvas, you have a, a folder called Hip Hop Samples. They're not all hip hop samples, it's just that's what the folder was called, so that's what the that's what the zip file got called. But this is where you can, and I think I brag dragged it into an earlier one as well. But yeah, it's right here under hip hop samples. And this is some samples for you to work with, and that's these samples. If I go back into Ableton Live, it's these, I've got them right here in my, my sidebar here. And it's all these different samples, these classic hip hop cuts. And I've got go in here, I can just go in here and say, okay, let's look at the chops. Different chops of that. Let's get some drums. All right, so all these old school. Right, and I can just go through and right, and I can say, okay, I like that one, so I'll drag that one in right here. Cool. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drag in a couple of these. I'm just gonna hold down Shift and click them all, and I'll drag them in to this folder, this uh, track right here, and I'm just dragging them into the track. Now watch what happens. I'm going to go ahead and turn my metronome on. When I play it, 
what I can do is I can play these all right from this track right here. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. All right, these are pretty much the same. All right, so I'm gonna get rid of these two here, which are, I wasn't super into those. And I'm, sorry, I'm just looking at my dog. What are you doing? Oh, sorry, I'm gonna put her back in my lap. She has like too much space. So now she can actually move around the room because that's the way this room is set up. I'm gonna change this after we take a break. But anyway, so I've got these beats here. Now I just wanna pull your attention to something here. When I hit play on one, look where it plays. So I'm gonna hit start. And when I click play right now, I'm gonna click play again. Notice that it doesn't start playing until the beginning of the next bar. Two, three, four. Okay, I'm gonna hit play right now. And you can see what happens is it flashes before it starts actually playing. And the flash is showing you what's about to play. And then uh, it doesn't start playing until the downbeat of the bar. And the reason why it doesn't start playing until the downbeat of the bar is because of this quantize right here. This quantize makes sure it doesn't start playing until the downbeat of the bar. Now the reason why that's so cool is that when we have more stuff in here, let's get a synth in here. Okay, I'm gonna drag this synth in here and now Okay, so that one sounds pretty cool. Let's put this one in here. Put this one in here. Let's try this one. That's cool. Let's try this one. I'm just trying some of these out. These are all just chords. Now let's drag this one in here. Now, play this one. Notice how it starts playing on the downbeat. If I want to stop playing, I can hit one of the stop buttons. Turn my metronome off, I don't need that anymore. And notice also, if I hit stop, it's going to stop that here. And I can play over here. Let's go grab, uh, let's grab the roads here, let's see. There we go, that one's kind of cool. Here we go, let's grab this one here. Start this one from a slightly different place. And you 
can see how I can start these <laughs> yeah Sixth Avenue often does that So when I, I can use this quantize here, this global quantize here to start and stop my different uh, clips. And the other thing I want you to notice, if I put all these on the same track here, we can't play all these at the same time. It's just one at a time. So we have to have them on separate channels here. All right, like this. So if we want to have them playing at the same time, now I can hit play on this one here. So I can have that playing like that. Now, the other thing is, you say, okay, Tony, but what if I want to play all these at the same time? Because right now what I'm doing is I'm using my mouse to click on stuff, and that works okay, but it doesn't work great. So what I can do is I make sure I line them up across like this on scenes. So if I want to play these here, let me go ahead and let's go ahead and add in one little thing here with MIDI. And the way I can do MIDI is I'll take a instrument over here. I'll get a drum kit. I'll use my 808 drum kit. And I'm going to double click in here to add my own clip. You cannot double click on audio tracks to add clips on audio tracks. I'm going to double click in here to add my own cl uh, clip here. And I go down here, once I've double clicked in there and it's added me in a clip down here, and I'm going to go ahead and put in a, uh, uh, a sound by just double clicking. There we go, it puts in the note right there. I'm going to hold down Command and turn that up. Hold down Command and, and click and drag to turn it up and that turns your my velocity up. If I put my pencil tool in, I can just put it in. It's going to put it in at the last velocity I used. So now if I hit play, let's go over here. There we go. Now you can hear You can hear exactly how it fits in. Let me just change this to, there we go. Cool. Hear that 808? Now we can hear the 808's actually a little bit off with this one here. it's off with this one here. So what I can do is I can clean this one up a little bit, which you may or may not want to do. I actually may want to move this eight, this 808 around a little bit. There we go, it's much better. And move this one over a little bit. A little bit more. I'm just using my ears to kind of put it in the right place. And you 
can hear how much better that sounds, right? And I'm just, and this is all stuff you can do with Logic or Ableton, I mean, Logic or Pro Tools or whatever, but it kind of works a little bit, I don't know, just easier in Ableton Live uh, than working in those other ones. So, <clears throat> all right, so I got this now, I'm gonna lay them across using my scenes like I mentioned before. So let's say, okay, I've got my 808 here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take all my sounds that I wanna play together, I'm gonna make sure they're on a, a, a line going across like this. So I'm gonna take these, and I kinda like this one here. And now if I click on this across the top over here, grab the second one here what I do is I just pull these down using option and it'll make a copy pull it down and I do this hit play I'm just gonna move these out of the way there we go cool nice play this one right here Now if I want to have a little break, I want to move these around here and I'm using option, if I want to make a copy, if I want to make a copy, I, I use option, drag it around and you can see that when I do that, see how it puts a little document symbol with a plus sign there, that's just show that I'm copying it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, play on this here. And now you can hear what's going to happen is everything's going to shift. It stays the same tempo because I haven't changed my tempo, but let's go ahead and put in a uh, bass line or something like that. Let's grab a bass line from these hip hop samples and go over here to bass. A um, cosmic hip hop. Let's go in here and see what's in here. Oops, bass. I kind of want like an acoustic bass, but I don't think there's. I don't think there is an acoustic bass in here, so I'm just going to go ahead and drag this one over here. And let's see what this sounds like. I can. Between these and these scene buttons over here. I can also copy and paste this in using copy and paste. That's using all that stuff there <clears throat> and then if I want to kind of play something in our next step after we've like laid out some scenes we got some like loops in here and they're you know noticing what they're doing how they're working here the next thing we can do is actually play it into the other view I just closed my 
my uh, just to open up some screen real estate here I just closed it by clicking on this button over here what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit my record button up here and now I'm gonna hit play now this is actually a preference that I have set up in here so that it doesn't record autumn like immediately um, I think that it's down here record warp launch over here where it says uh, start playback with record I have that turned off I don't like that and we're gonna go over some of the preferences here in a bit but I have that turned off but what we can do here is uh, if you have it turned on which is the default what's gonna happen is if I hit record I just make sure everything's right as playing I hit go then I play the right ones and now what it's doing is it's actually recording it into this view here and we just record it into this view over here. Let me do that one more time. Hit my record button, go ahead. And I'm gonna hit different things. Whatever I do on here is gonna get recorded into the other one. volume down here a little bit and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stop this bass and I'm gonna play this thing over here one at a time I'm gonna play the synth over here even though there are different places I can still play them they're all gonna play and it's going to record it into the other view, even if they're not on the same uh, scene. So I can deviate from my scenes. Go back to this original one here. And then when I'm done, I just hit stop like that. I'm going to go back over here and I can see everything I just played is in here. I'm going to hit this orange button right here to make sure it's going to actually play what's on my track here. We'll explain that a little bit later. And now we can see everything I just did is in here. So if I hit play over here, it'll play back everything that I needed to without having me have to hit the play button. Cool. All right. I think that's a good place to take a break. Also, I think the dog needs to go use the bathroom or something. She's like, you see me wrestling with her. She's like super, uh, like, restless today. She's already pooped and peed a lot, so I don't know what her deal is, but apparently she has to do more. <laughs> 